Do you know that many churches, they produce dancers, musicians, ushers, prayer warriors? But where are the leaders? Because these dancers, singers, you know, musicians, multimedia are all for program ministry. That's not for people ministry. Leadership, we need leaders that would take care of people to bring them to the level that they need to go. We need leaders to do that. Say amen. We have enough singers, musicians, multimedia team. Where are the people-oriented leaders? The consequence is fatal. The church die because of singing and dancing and multimedia. You want the church to grow, you have to raise and produce more leaders. The more leaders, the better. Because these leaders are focusing on people, not on program. The pastor is not just preaching, the pastor is equipping. Shift immediately. You're thinking, you must shift immediately right now. You are here to be trained, not just to preach, but learn how to equip and train people. Can I have an amen? So you are not here to learn something. You have to prepare yourself to impart on other people. You are a leader that will transform people from ordinary disciples to become leaders. That's your job. Jesus do that. That's the pattern. That's the original design. Come and follow me and I disciple you. But one day I will form you. As I selected you, I will form you. And when I send you, you're on the level of an apostle. He's not a disciple anymore. He is a what? An apostle, a true leader. So disciple is different from a leader. You cannot be a leader if you're not a disciple. But because you are a disciple, it's not automatic that you're a leader. You need to be trained and equipped. So once you enter the ministry, don't follow the pattern of the old traditional way. That you master how to preach. No, you master how to train and equip people. You have to master that. How can I train and equip people? So do you have any idea about training? When you lost the idea or you don't have idea, that's why many churches don't grow. Because when we talk about leadership, we think about, you better go to Bible school. Because we don't have any idea that in the old way of doing things, like the New Testament church, they don't have Bible school. Their training is in the house. Their pastor is an equipping pastor. Say amen. And we lost the original design. Amen. I'm glad there is a school like this to bring back the original design. <laughs> Can I have an amen? So you're, you're coming to this place to train and equip you to train other people. Do you see yourself training people? I think right now I, I'm trying to destroy that this is not about singing and dancing and music. <laughs> Somebody here is, is losing your appetite on music now. <laughs> uh, sometimes you, you're, lose, you're beginning to lose like, I don't want that. I want the real thing. Because the real thing is discipling people and then training leaders. That's the real thing. We cannot change the world by singing and dancing. We change the world by producing disciples that turn out to become leaders. That's how to change the world. How many of you want to change the world? You better learn how to train and equip. Amen? So don't just master preaching. Huh? Don't just master casting out the devil. Don't just master deliverance. Master equipping people. Training leaders who knows how to deliver people from demons. Can I have an amen? But remember this. Everything you know, you transfer to the person. If I know how to disciple, you have to know how to disciple. If I know how to train leaders, you have to know how to train leaders. Because that is duplicable ministry. That's how to conquer the world. Are you learning something? We have to answer... 
What are the reasons why we stop producing leaders? Number one, we become less aggressive now in raising, raising leaders. We become less aggressive. I find out that many pastors today, raising leaders is not their passion. Not, I realize that I should never ever lose my passion. I need to be constantly aggressive in raising, raising leaders. In the Philippines, I have my national 12 leaders. 12 leaders. Big churches. I discipled this pastor 12. Then one day God spoke to me, Oriel, the 12 pastors that you are discipling right now are growing churches. You have to start a new one now. So I select young pastors aging like 28 to 35. I train them now. Because my goal is to produce this kind of pastor for the sake of the next generation. Producing leaders now. You understand what I'm saying here? I think we need to develop this idea that we need to keep on producing leaders. And we have to do it aggressively. Amen? Can I ask this question? What is your passion? How is your aggression? For something. The only thing that I want to be aggressive is to disciple and raise leaders. I spend my time for that. That's my passion. And I am aggressive raising leaders. Any opportunity that I can see. That's why when Pastor Blood tell me, Pastor, you have to train these future pastors. I go, That's it, Lord. This is the reason I'm here. I'm not, I said, thank you, Jesus. I know, Lord, I'm not there just to preach on Sunday, but I am imparting to these future leaders. Can I have an amen? You must be aggressive on this. You need to have passion to disciple and raise leaders for the future. I told you, after you listen to this message, you will lose your passion for singing, dancing. <laughs> now you have different passion. Because there are so many people who are singing already. <laughs> I don't want to join them. I told those singers and dancers, do it, man. May the Lord's anointing be upon you. But we need leaders for the future. <laughs> Ten times better than us. Can I have a man? You have to have aggression on this. Your church must be aggressive in raising leaders. Because that's why many churches don't produce leaders because they lack aggression. Less aggressive in training leaders. Number two, we become less intentional. We become less intentional. Less aggressive, less intentional. Because if you're going to raise leaders, you're going to disciple people, you must be intentional. Discipleship is intentional. It never happened by accident. Raising leaders is intentional. It never happened by accident. Intentionality must be in your heart. Amen? If you can go back to your church, you try to observe, are you intentional in terms of discipleship and raising leaders? You must be intentional. Every church must be intentional. Must be aggressive in discipleship and leadership development. You must be intentional. Number three, churches was not able to produce leaders because we become less strategic in training leaders. We become less strategic. Because if you want to raise leaders, you must be strategic. Not just aggressive, not just intentional, you must be strategic. So I develop a leadership pipeline. I call it leadership pipeline. That when a person go through this pipeline, I produce disciples and I produce leaders. I produce a system in my church so that one person, when they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, immediately they will go through a certain process and then we could produce disciples and we produce leaders. Do you understand what I'm saying here? You must be strategic. 
Okay? Not many churches today are strategic. The first five years of my ministry, I visited Korea. You came from Korea? Ano yung sayo? Long time ago. I've been to Yoyo the church. with Pastor Yong Gicho. I go there. I train cell leaders on Yong Gicho's church. And when I visit Korea, I learned so much thing from Korea. That's where I learned I have to be aggressive, <laughs> intentional, and strategic. It always fill my mind. Or yeah, if you want to raise up leaders for the next generation, 10 times better than you, you have to be aggressive. Because people hate lead training. They don't like training. You have to be aggressive. You need to show your passion that this is the right thing to do. You have shared today we have to change the world. But we have to equip ourselves. I have to, I have to speak to myself. And then I have to be intentional. I have to plan. I have to strategize on this. Amen. I need to have three words. I need to desire. And then I need to design a strategy. I desire to change the world. Then I desire to produce leaders. To produce disciples. And then I design a system. A plan. A strategy. Are you listening? I need to desire and design. Desire and design. Most pastors don't have a desire to conquer the world. They just, it's okay for them. You got 50 people in their church, not me. Because the desire is the desire of Jesus to conquer the world. And he designed a strategy and I designed as well. His design is to select disciples, form the disciple. Until he can send his disciples. Desire and design. Amen. Every church, the people must desire the vision. And they must design a strategy. So most churches, they lose no more. They are no longer aggressive on these matters. They are no longer intentional. And most of all, they are no longer strategic. Show me a church with training system, with preserving system, I promise you that church will grow. Because Jesus loved system. What is the system? If you evangelize people, what is your system? Now they go to church, what, what will happen? So we are just happy inviting people to church and then when they go to church, they don't know what to do with the new believer because they don't develop a strategic process how to do these things. I pray that every one of you would learn how to strategize, how to plan, how to strategize. We win. This is our strategy on winning. We preserve the people. This is our strategy. We disciple our people. This is our strategy. We train people for leadership. This is our strategy. And then how do we send people? This is our strategy. You must be intentional, aggressive, and strategic in the way you do things. You are not guessing. I know what I'm doing because I follow the original design. The church original design must be upon you. Can I have a man? We become less aggressive, less intentional, and less strategic. That's why the church are weak. That's the consequence. The church are weak. We never produce disciples. We never produce leaders. We produce religious people. They just go to church because there is a program, there is a service. And then we have a weak church. Amen. Amen. Now, I need to learn how to challenge my disciple. If you have disciple, you have to learn how to challenge them. Do you know how I challenge my disciple? How to challenge your people? How to challenge your disciple? Okay? Let me clarify this. I got five systems in my church. I developed this. I keep in developing it. Notice, if I share this five system, every church must become systematic church. Say the word systematic. 
most people will disagree with me because they think like if you use a system, you're no longer led by the Holy Spirit. Wrong. When Jesus told Peter, go back to the ocean and, cut and let down the net for a catch. Do you know that Jesus can easily call all the fish to float and then go to the beach? He's, he got a power. But Jesus respect the boat. He respect the paddle. He respect the net. Why? The boat, the paddle, and the net is the system to catch fish. So why did Jesus respect the system? Because Jesus knows that system is necessary to catch a fish. So stop blaming the devil if you are not winning souls. Why people are gone? It's the devil. Why people are out? It's the devil. Why you keep on blaming the devil? You're supposed to blame yourself. You don't know what you are doing. And the devil said, I know nothing about it. <laughs> because just by yourself is enough. You don't need the devil to destroy your ministry. You need to learn how to use system. Can I share to you my system? One, I have a system on evangelism. I have a prayer evangelism strategy. We use like the prayer triplets. The three person will pray together. You pray for three. You pray for three. You pray for three. We are a total of nine people. We pray together. Every three of us will be accountable, responsible, and we have to do this. So the system is like this. You three, the triplets, will pray three person. Each of two and three, total of nine, right? So this is what you got. You plan to pray. For the next 30 days, you have to plan to pray. So don't, it's, this is not about everybody, it's about your three. You plan, you pray, you plan to pray for the next 30 days. Plan for this, pray for this three person. Second, plan to invite. Don't just pray, plan to invite. We have a system. And then number three, plan to preserve the three, the nine. So plan to pray. Plan to invite and plan to preserve. We have a system. So let's say I got 100 triplets. It means 900 people. So I will teach them how to pray. The system again. This prayer evangelism. I tell my people, this is not the kind of prayer for put level of prayer. Huh? Because most people, they pray for so like, like this. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for these three souls. In Jesus' name, amen. That's prayer for put kind of prayer. You don't win people by that kind of prayer. So I need to develop a strategy. Prayer evangelism strategy. This is the system. One, you need to learn how to worship the Lord. That's before you pray. So that the assurance of God's presence will be with you. Two, you have to declare to speak life to this dry bones. So that the bones will live. The second step, the third step, you have to rebuke the devil in their house, in their campus, in their, in their office because these are contaminated by demonic activity. You rebuke the devil. Number four, you have to pull down strongholds in their life because they have pride in their mind. The unveiling must happen, so you have to destroy all these strongholds in their life. And then number five, declare freedom in the life of these people. Imagine the three people will be praying like that. Amen. The nine people will be delivered. And then we pray for them. We invite them. And we preserve them. That's how we grow our church. Because we have a system in the way we evangelize people. So the first system is evangelism. The second system is preserving our harvest. I need to have a system. Okay. Everyone who come to the church, we have a consolidation process. We have to preserve them because we gather the harvest, but we need to learn how to preserve the harvest. How many churches to say they love having a harvest and then they lose the harvest? Because you don't have a system how to preserve the harvest. You know how we preserve the harvest? The three person who pray, they are the one who preserve the harvest. I, I, I closed down the follow-up ministry and the evangelism ministry in my church. Do you know that in my church, we don't have evangelism ministry? 
We don't have that. The follow-up ministry, we don't have that. Do you know why? Because if you got 200 people and you got 10 people on evangelism ministry and another 10 people and another 10 people on follow-up ministry, the 180 people is watching. <laughs> Only the 20 people are doing it. And then they begin to blame one another. Because you don't follow up, but we win. No, you win, but we, we cannot follow up there because they're not here. So I said, I closed down all the evangelism ministry. No more evangelism in this church anymore. I shut down the evangelism ministry. And I shut down all the following, follow up ministry. Starting today, we are all evangelizing. We are all following up. Okay, I train you how to evangelize. And I will train you how to follow up people. <laughs> now I got a system. The church begin to grow. I shut down my prayer ministry. Because every time I have my prayer meeting, no one is meeting with me. <laughs> I know it happens to your church. <laughs> Come on, liars, go to church. <laughs> I promise you, you have your prayer meeting, no one is meeting. So I decided not to do it. So I bring the prayer meeting to those triplets. And now the whole church is praying. That's why we win a lot of people. Because the people are engaging in their culture and in their community. You learn something here? Yeah. Amen. So I got the first system is evangelism, prayer strategy system. The preservation number three is the small group system. The cell system. The small group system. This is so important. Okay, can I ask this question? If you saw a woman going to the maternity clinic after they birth a son or a daughter, where did the mother bring the baby? Home, right? Not on a school. <laughs> I see this to many churches. When you become a, a Christian, they brought you to school. I said, you're crazy. That's a baby Christian. You don't bring him to Bible school. You bring him to home where they develop relationship. They learn how to follow Jesus. They learn how to fisher a man, and they learn how to fellowship. See that? You have to connect that immediately. Because cell group is a place where we develop our growth. Growth happens best in the small group. So the system is like this. When you are born again on this building, I see to it that you begin to connect to the cells. In, the, in a matter of 12 to 24 hours, you will be in the cells. That's our system. So I have system on evangelism, I have system on preservation, I have a system on cell, and cell ministry. We got to take good care of the new believers. Number four, I have a training system. The equipping system. Equipping system runs to per one year. Okay? The first training that I made is learning how to live. Learning how to live. Because they were dead in sin. Now they are alive. They need to learn how to live. Can I have amen? It, take, it took me like four months to do that for the new believers. But after that, I will bring him to another level of training. I call this learning how to lead. The learning how to lead will took you like six months to nine months. So that after you finish that course, the training process, we produce a cell leader. Are you listening? Who knows how to disciple people. He knows how to win. He knows how to preserve. And he knows how to disciple and raise a leader. Do you understand that? Okay. So four. One. What's number one? Evangelism. Prayer strategy system. Number two. Preservation system. Number three. Small group or cell system. Number four. Training system. Right? Okay? You Number five, discipleship system. You need to have a discipleship system in your church. Do you learn something here? Okay? This is so important. So when you come up to a school and then you, when you become a pastor, <laughs> your priority is not to build building. Your priority is to build your system. You must become a system builder. Oh, you, that's probably the first time you hear that word. Because every, every pastor who train in the Bible school, they will teach you how to start and run a Sunday service program. 
how to how to baptize believers right how to conduct your wedding right right how to pray for these houses how to dedicate babies they never teach you how to build the church you need to learn how to build the church church was built by building the system and the system must be followed it must be obeyed and everyone must be submissive to the system of the church obey submit and follow the system so i have my full-time workers in my church i have my 12 disciples i told them this is our system if we talk about evangelism this is our system if we talk about preservation of the new believers this is our system if we talk about discipling our people this is our system i am a system oriented pastor do you understand i'm not the kind of pastor who want to guess what to do next oh there are many people came what to do next i don't know let's entrust everything to god and then when they are gone the devil is attacking our church System, baby. System. Can I have a amen? Number two, after you're setting up the system, you need to set up the process. Okay? Say that word, process. Process is so important. Process means step by step things to do. Not every church has have a clear process. Okay, let me give you the process number one process is to you need to master how to gather the harvest that is soul winning and evangelism the first stage of a true pastor is good on harvest soul winning you understand that you have to understand every possible way to produce evangelism in your church I rally my whole church to go to prayer for three, the triplets, so that we could have a great harvest. So the first step of the system, the system, the process is start from harvest. The second is to preserve the harvest. After you gather, the, you see the process? You gather the harvest, but you need to learn how to preserve the harvest. Are you seeing that? What's the use of harvesting people but fail to preserve it? Then you lose a lot of people. Then you evangelize them again. You lose, and then these people get tired. I, I, I've, been, I've been there. I have already attended. I like the church, but I'm not coming back. Why? Because they were not disciples. You see, the first step is what? The process starts from soul winning. Learning how to harvest people. You must, you must be a strategist on that. Number two, you need to learn how to preserve what you harvest. So you need to have an idea how to have a follow-up strategy. How to have a preservation strategy. What is the next step? So sometimes this is my strategy. I always tell my people, the moment somebody came to church, that person must be introduced to seven to ten people so that he might feel at home. Okay, so once you come to my church, the cell leader and his leaders will begin to introduce the person to at least seven people. This is our senior pastor. This is our leaders. Oh, but this is our worship leader. This is one of our cell leaders. By the way, this is my team, and we welcome you. And everybody said, "Hey, everybody's naming names." When somebody got to know, like, "Hey, hey, Lee," for example, "Hey, Ryan, Ryan." I want, I want you to know our pastor. Ryan, I want you to know our worship leader. Ryan, 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 Ryan. Until he was bombarded. Ryan, 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 Ryan. I said, I'm popular here. <laughs> Nobody called my name in my house. I was rejected. Nobody loves me. But in this house, everybody knows me. I want to be here. That's a strategy. System. Can I have a man? We also have like we call wow church strategy. Wow church means 
you prepare to wow your first timer <laughs> you wow the first timer right <laughs> when you when this car comes someone is having a juice good morning sir welcome to our church you take our juice hot water or cold water what do you want and the bus and the guest just coming down from that the car said what's that uh, sir I, I know you're you travel probably you're tired you can have our juice or what you want cold water that's a wow thing no church is doing that here you might be the first one do you have a wow church that every time they come here they wow wow the singing is wow the preaching is wow everything is wow amen <laughs> but other church when you go to church yuck <laughs> yuck yuck <laughs> you know yucky <laughs> i don't like this i am committed not to come back again <laughs> you need to have a preservation strategy amen don't forget that word wow so that when you come back to your church watch your church if you have wow ministry so I begin to create an hospitality team in my church. The only thing they focus is the first timer. Amen. We have to make this first timer comfortable. Someone is sitting beside him with the Bible. So that when the pastor said, let's open our Bible, they will open for you this Bible for you. And I said, wow, I feel so special, right? And then from the beginning till the end, somebody sitting beside him to help him. That's a strategy right there. Are you learning something here? Do you have a wow church? <laughs> You're learning something here, right? So I have first, I have the harvest system or process of the harvest, net, preserve, and then train the harvest. Gather the harvest, preserve the harvest, train the harvest. You don't stop processing these people. If the person came here, uh, in our case, let's, let's say the person will come for the second time, the third time, we bring him to start up your new life lesson. That's what we do in our church. And then we eventually prepare the person to our life class study night lesson until they go to encounter. And then after graduating from encounter, they go to the process of leadership. We have to train the harvest. So if you're not interested about the, the training process here, well, you can find another church. Well, the other church, they do nothing. You can go there if you want to. Until you die in your spiritual life. But here, this is a disciple-making church. Amen. We train people. Amen. We, we, God will change your world so that one day you help to change the world. <laughs> can I be amen? So first, the process is gather the harvest, preserve the harvest, train the harvest, and now send the harvesters. <laughs> Again, the same. We select, we form, we send. You see the strategy? You see the process? It's connected, right? So we do everything based on Jesus' vision and Jesus' strategy. Hallelujah. You ha we have to do that. That way. Can I have an amen? So the picture is like this. You are born here. So the church become a maternity system. Come on. Not entertainment church. The place is birthing a place for the new believers. You have to create that atmosphere in your church. That the church is the maternity system. On this church, people are born in their spiritual life. After they are born, they, we brought them to our house, cell group. After a few times spending in the house like a new baby, when they begin to grow, it's time to send them to school. Training system. Amen? And when they were trained, now they win as well. <laughs> They reproduce their own kind. You see, are you seeing the connection of our vision and our strategy? So every church must clarify their vision. 
So that according to the vision, that's how we conduct the affairs of our church. We need to clarify our strategy. Select your disciple, form your disciples, and send your disciple. Then let's strategize on that. Based on our strategy. It connects everything. Can I amen? amen? So one day you will become a pastor. You are no longer, you know, you are no longer focusing on just preaching, but you are focusing on equipping. Right? You are focusing not just on your teaching, but your disciple making. Suddenly your mind has been shifted to a pastor who produced leaders of leaders. To a pastor who will grow a church and conquer a city. Because that's the original design of the church. Do you learn something here? I mean, how many of you, among you excited to gather the harvest? To preserve the harvest. To train the harvest. And to send the harvesters. <laughs> Amen. That's a very simple process. Amen. And then you will begin to st st step by step doing that. And I promise you. You will do a lot of changes in your church. Are you part of a church here? Anyone? You're part of a church, right? Every one of you is part of the church, right? Probably from another city, coming from different places. It's time for you to evaluate your church. Don't condemn your pastors. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is this. You evaluate what you have learning in this place so that one day, you can make a decision what I will do when I become a pastor. If I go to another place, I need to speak the right vision, the language of the vision, the language of the strategy. Can I have an amen? So that when you begin to help other churches where you belong, you can tell them that this is the original design of the Bible. We have to conquer the world. Okay? Our church should not remain small. In Tri City, we have 300,000 people. We have, we have to conquer the 300,000 people. Our church cannot contain that. That's why we're getting ready to become big. Amen. We need to dream now. I want a big church. My, I'm dreaming a church with 10,000 people. I'm dreaming young people with my church will become like 20,000. I'm dreaming. Why? Because my dream is big. Jesus' vision is big. Can I be amen? And I, I'm using a system to make these things happen. I know what's the step by step. I know the process. I know the system. I know my goal. Because I learned it from the Bible. You need to be the best on this. Can I be amen? amen? Can we give a clap of praise to Jesus? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So, how do, you, how do you develop leaders right now to sustain our future? Let me say it on another word. This is the time, this is the season to reinforce our future with leaders. Many pastors, they don't have an idea. That if you fail to reinforce your church with future leaders. We cannot make it. If we want to transform our nation. One day I have a vision. One day I was a student during the time and God showed me the vision. He showed me how the nation was corrupted. And he showed me how this nation was totally controlled by the devil. And God told me this. The reason is the church failed to reinforce the future with godly leaders. Not just leader for church, but you failed to prepare the senators, the congressmen for the future, the mayor and the governor. Because you're not winning the campus, you're not training leaders in the campus. So God called me specifically to preach the gospel to every campus. By doing that, I was able to prepare future leaders because I believe that at this time, I have to reinforce the future with leaders now. So I begin to talk to students like this. You can be the next senator of this nation. 
You can be the governor, the mayor, the congressman for the future. I want you to get ready and prepare. And all the students said, yes. Suddenly they enter into training because they want to become leaders. Can I have amen? I want you to understand this, that we have to solve the problem of leadership shortage. Because the pastors, the churches in the past, fail to produce godly leaders. So what happened to our nations today? Yeah, there's a lot of church, but all are weak church, useless. They don't even, people don't even bother to meet the church. Why? Because we produce leaders who lack influence. Because there's no leaders inside the church. One day, if we believe on this vision, senators, congressmen will coming, be coming to the church because that congressman and senator and mayor are disciples of Jesus Christ. Being trained and equipped as a young person until they become future leaders of the land. Then they will change all this crazy law. <laughs> Can I have an Law like save the dolphin but kill the babies. Those law are crazy. We can save the dolphins, but we can kill the babies. Where do you learn that? Because these people are evil people. They would rather kill babies and they give rights to the dolphins. <laughs> this is crazy, isn't it? Why? Because we produce legislators trained by the devil to destroy our nation. This is the time to open our eyes that the only way to save America is to raise up true disciples and leaders in the church. Can I have an amen? Are you getting ready to disciple young people to produce future leaders? That's our goal. That's why you are trained here. So you are not coming from this place and then after finishing your course, you are just leading a small Bible study. No. I'm changing the world. <laughs> my, my daughter always asked me that question. Dad, where are you going? Changing the world. Okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> somebody asked my daughter, where did your daddy go? Of course, changing the world. So before I leave, she was 12 now. Dad, you're going now? Yeah. Just keep on changing the world, daddy. When it's my time, I'll be there for you. Because if she is 12, she wants to change the world. Your daughters, your sons one day will want to change the world. Because you are a world changer. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbor right now, let's change the world, baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell that person, <laughs> I was born for this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this season, a time of change in our mindset. Indeed, God, we're going back to the original design and we're coming, Lord, to obey you. We pray and lift up this nation, Lord, America. America will be transformed because the gospel cause is being taught to these leaders, Lord. These are now world changers getting ready, Lord, to bring the gospel to every city, Lord, and bring glory to your name. Help us, Lord. This, this revelation will come upon our hearts. Thank you for unveiling it, making it a revelation to see the reality of this vision. Thank you, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's have another break for 10 minutes. Come on. Breathe, breathe.